All right, for this video, we want to go through the Social Security Administration's form SS5, which is used to apply for a Social Security card. So in this example, we've got parents that just had a newborn, so they're filing this on the newborn child's behalf. Uh, so we'll go through the form. It's pretty straightforward. A lot of this is self-explanatory, but we also want to highlight uh, some of the specific instructions that are required for this filing. And then I also want to talk about why it's so important from a tax perspective to get these done. Uh, so the Social Security number, it's issued to U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and certain eligible non-immigrant workers in the U.S. And so the Social Security number you know, obviously is important for a lot of reasons, but it's used for registering for school, applying for passports, opening bank accounts, tax returns, and ultimately, right, its initial purpose was to track the earnings of the worker to determine their ultimate Social Security benefits at retirement, right? Now, why is this so important for parents? So parents finally in their 1040s, you need to have a valid Social Security number for your children to claim them as dependents. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, but in order to claim them as dependents and be eligible for a lot of these tax credits, like the child tax credit, the additional child tax credit, uh, child independent care expenses, deductions and credits. You need to have valid social security numbers for the children. And more importantly, the social security number has to be issued, uh, has to be applied for and issued before the due date of your return. So if for some reason you have a newborn and you wait, uh, let's say two years to go ahead and file that social security number, you cannot go back in time and amend your return to claim these uh, uh, tax credits, right? They're lost. So really important to get it done as soon as possible. Now, applying for the Social Security number at the hospital is certainly the recommended approach. So the reason why that's the best option is the state agency that's going to process the birth certificate is going to just relay all that information to the SSA and then they'll process the social security number. So it's, it's almost just a one step process for you as a parent. Now, if you don't go through the hospital, you can apply directly with the social security administration. And so in order to do that, you have to complete the SS5 uh, form, which we're gonna look at, and you have to provide all the supporting documents to verify the age of the child and, and the child's identity. And because this is a newborn, you also have to provide identifying documents as the parent that's applying for this on their behalf, right? Now, any original documents that you send them will be returned to you. So it's not as if uh, whatever you mail them is going to get lost forever, right? Once that social security number is processed, they will return anything you provided them. So let's look at our fact pattern here. We've got Jane Doe and John Doe. They're married and they just recently had a child, Jack and he was born in November 2023. Now they didn't file with the hospital, uh, so they're separately going uh, this route with an application directly to the Social Security Administration. So they are filing this in November, so end of November, so this should give them uh, enough time to get that Social Security number assigned before they need to file their 2023 taxes. So if we have a look at the form here, it's just one page, so it's pretty straightforward, but uh, again, really important on timing to get this done because you do not want to miss out on the opportunity to claim certain benefits uh, when you have to file your taxes and obviously your child is ultimately going to need a social security number. So uh, get this filed for them as soon as you can. So at the top here, the name that's going to be shown on the card, so the legal uh, name assigned at birth. So we have Jack as uh, middle name Doe. If there's a different name, uh, at birth, so it's been changed, then you would list that there, but in this case, it uh, doesn't apply to us. Now, item two, uh, we are applying for a new, so an original Social Security number and card, so line two is blank, but if this was a, a, a renewal to replace a card, so if you lost your Social Security card and you need a new one, then you would enter this SSN that was previously assigned. So place of birth, he was born in Tampa, Florida on November 6, 2023. Uh, citizenship, he is a U.S. citizen, right? So he was born in the U.S. and his parents are both U.S. citizens, so he will be a U.S. citizen. Now, items six and seven are voluntary, right? None of this impacts your ability to get a social security number and card. Uh, it's just used for survey purposes, but he has indicated uh, no, and then uh, race is white, the sex of the child, male or female, 
male in this case, and then lists the information on the parent. So the parents uh, list the mother's uh, maiden name, right? So mother's name at birth, so Jane Smith, and then we have John Doe down here, and then you should list the social security number for the parent. If you have it and you know it, you list one. Now, if it's unknown, you can check unknown, or if you were born, uh, or if you as a parent don't have a social security number because you're a non-resident, then you would just leave it blank. Now, item 11 has the person listed in item one, or anyone acting on his or her behalf ever filed for or received an SSN before, and the answer here is no, right? So again, this is, this is an original application. We've never applied for or received one for this child before. Okay, so we can skip down to line 14. So this is the date that we are signing and filing this form. We provide a contact number and address where we want the uh, card mailed to. So this would just be the parent's address where you want it sent to. And then again, if you provided any, well, you have to, but the, to the extent that you provided uh, supporting documentation to verify identity and age, uh, they would mail those materials back to you. Line 17, this would be signed. The child's under 18, uh, so they're not gonna be the one signing this. So you as the parent are gonna sign this, and then you're gonna indicate the relationship to the person in item one. And in this case, it's the natural parent. Now, as it notes down here at the very bottom, don't write anything on this line, right? The Social Security Administration team, the staff there, they will input the information down here as appropriate. Uh, when they're processing the social security number. All right, so that covers it. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward form. Again, it's just really, really important to get this filed as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, of course, if you're filing because you, you've lost your social security card, it's the same application, but you're completing different fields, right? And then certain, uh, certain different uh, supporting evidence has to be provided to verify your identity. All right, so that covers it for this video. Again, quick and straight uh, forward to the point. I uh, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, and as always, I appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.